I just got the Nintendo Switch Lite, and you know what we do here. Let's take it apart. So this is what comes in the box. Obviously, the console itself. Then we also have the instruction manual. Won't be needing that. And we also have the charger. And here we go. Let's turn it on and see if it works or if it needs to be charged. Oh, there we go. It's coming up on the screen now. Okay, so we know it works. Let's see if it still works by the time we're done. Looks like we're gonna need our tri-wing screwdriver as with the regular Nintendo Switch. I'm gonna be using my favorite electric precision screwdriver. I'll leave a link to that in the description below if you would like to buy one for yourself. You can already see this is where the heat sink is. So that is where the fan pushes the air out. And here's the air intake. So when you're playing this, you don't wanna cover this or this to make sure it gets good airflow. Looks like we have the micro SD card and then the game slot up there. Those look very similar as with the regular switch. Now I'm guessing we just need to pry this back cover off. Yep. As you can see, you can actually just, so far just do it with my fingernails. Okay, so that's how the back comes off. It's actually fairly easy. Just go around with your fingernail and then there's just some little clips. We do have to be careful of ribbon cables and there's none. So we've just got the buttons here and the card reader here and SD card slot there. Nothing too surprising there. Well, let's take a look at the internals. So we've got this metal plate here. It looks like it's just held on by Phillips screws. So let's take that off and then hopefully we'll get a good view of the motherboard after that. That screw is also a different size. So that's kind of annoying. I do like how the regular switch pretty much has all the same size screws. That's really nice for taking it apart and putting it back together. And we got very similar design so far for the thermal system. We've got thermal paste here and here. And if you have looked at the insides of the switch, which hopefully you have, you'll see that this is the same and this is the same. So the main chips are under this metal shield. Then there's thermal paste between the metal shield and this heat pipe. And then there's thermal paste between the heat pipe and this top metal plate. That really helps dissipate the heat between the metal plate and then also the heat pipe. So it looks like we have a 3.8 volt, 3,500 milliamp hour battery, 13.6 watt hours. It is definitely smaller than the regular switch. So I do see that there is a separate motherboard over here. So next, let's take these gray covers off, see what's under there. Okay, this is an interesting speaker design we've got here. So there's a speaker here and then there's like this air chamber right here as well, which is interesting. It looks like it's that way on both sides. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so here's the other cool thing is that this is the speaker right here. The speaker actually come the sound actually comes out right here which is down under the switch light so this is where the sound comes out even though the speakers all the way up here and thermal paste on my hand already and here we go so here we have the d-pad so we've got more of a normal D-pad on the Nintendo Switch Lite, which is cool. So the nice thing is this is that this board can be replaced if needed, separate of the motherboard. So that's always nice. And here we have the analog stick. Let's compare this analog stick to the analog stick of the Nintendo Switch. And here we go. The two analog sticks, they look basically the same. Now this is the updated design. If you watched my new Nintendo Switch teardown, this, the teardown of the most recent Switch model, there is kind of like an indentation right here on these new analog sticks. But other than that, it looks pretty much the same. Let's put this analog stick in here and see if it works when we're done. Because at least as far as I can tell, it looks like the analog sticks are completely interchangeable between the Switch and the Switch Lite. That would be awesome as far as like a repair and parts standpoint. Then you don't have to have 
more parts to fix the same problem. We'll get this all put to back together and then we'll start looking at the rest of the switch light. Now with all that back together, let's get to the fun part. Let's check out the motherboard. So first thing that comes off, looks like it's gonna be the heat sink, then probably the fan or the card reader. And there we go with the heat sink and heat pipe. Let's check this thermal paste. That's eh, not too dry, I've seen a lot worse. This fan is a Delta Electronics 5 volt 0.21 amp fan. You can see the part number right there. So next we'll take off the card reader. It looks like this is just attached with a ribbon cable and it looks like there's a, another ribbon cable that goes to the headphone jack. It looks like these are two separate pieces but the ribbon cable is one piece just in itself. So unfortunately, if you break one or the other, you will have to replace it with one piece. Let's take it off though and have a look at it. Now with all those screws free, we can just pull it out of this connector. And here we go. I'm always a fan of it when game console manufacturers make these things so you can replace just one at a time. And now looking at the headphone jack, there's a ribbon cable that just connects right here. So you actually can replace the headphone jack separately if needed. So you can replace just the card reader or just the headphone jack. Now we'll remove the speaker and the other shoulder buttons over here. And then these cables here and this ribbon cable, then the screws so we can get the motherboard out. So now the first things first, it looks like the screen is connected here and here. And just from looking at it, it looks like if we had to remove the screen and digitizer, we could do so without removing this metal plate. I can't say for sure as I haven't done it, but that's what it looks like so far. Here is the other analog stick and it is the new updated type of analog stick as I would expect. So here we have the main shields taken off. We've got the main NVIDIA chip over here, and then we've got the other supporting chips here, the Bluetooth communication chip. I believe that's what the one is over here. So we have the charge port and the battery here, and then we have the M92T36 chip. If you've watched my Nintendo Switch repair videos, you know this chip often goes bad, so that's where that's located. This is the other charge control chip. We've even got the main coil right here that we had on the regular Nintendo Switch. And several of these other components look pretty similar as well. We've got all the chips on the underside of the main CPU chip. And then we have our buttons over here. It would have been nice if they would have separated these two boards out. So then if one of these buttons go bad or this button goes bad, then you wouldn't have to replace the whole motherboard. But the nice thing is that most of this kind of stuff is fixable, specifically these shoulder buttons. If you watched my video where I repaired a whole bunch of Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons, you saw that most of the time these were actually fixable. Now, this is also a great time to mention my new forum, tronicsfixforum.com. If you want to see more up-close pictures of this motherboard and other components on the Nintendo Switch Lite, then head over to that forum where you can check out the pictures, ask any questions, and then you can also ask other repair questions of any of your other consoles. I'm on the forum a lot, and there's also a lot of other people there that can help you with your specific game console question. So there's what's inside of the Nintendo Switch Lite. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a good day.